Hello everyone, it's Al Nygren back with some more filmmaker interviews for you as the New Jersey Film Festival Fall 2017 season is about to begin. This fall we have 27 films that are going to be screened between September 15th and November 2nd on select Friday, Saturday, and Sunday evenings. There's even a couple of Thursday night screenings as well that are revival programs. Well, the film festival has been running now for 36 years, and I'm proud to be the director that long, and, and we'll be back here again and again, hopefully for the next few years. But today, we have two very special artists, filmmakers here, to present the film that will be our opening night program. The film is a documentary about Lee Ronaldo, a very famous guitarist for the band Sonic Youth, and the name of the film is called Hello, 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 Lee Ronaldo Electric Trim. And we have director and editor, co-producers here, Fred Rydell and Jerry Freed. Welcome, gentlemen. All right, Fred, how did you get involved in making this film? Um, actually, almost accidentally. You know, as you've mentioned, um, we go back. Lee and I have been friends for a long time. And I had contacted him about something unrelated to the film, and he said he wasn't available to do whatever it was. And uh, because Raul, his producer from Barcelona, happened to be in New York, and they were just going to start tracking a new album, and I thought that that sounded pretty more interesting than the thing I'd called Lee about originally, so I thought, why don't I just come over with a camera mm. and see what happens? And Lee thought that sounded like a good idea. So literally the night before, this all happened within 24 hours of beginning production, mm. so there was no prep, there was no exploring, scouting. I mean, literally, I had never recorded you know this type, this process before. Mm. So I just showed up, and we. Exp I just said, look, I'll be hanging around. I just had a DSLR with a shotgun mic, no lighting, no rig, and they just did their thing. And it felt, it felt real. It felt like there could be a good, um, an interesting experience here. I didn't really know what they were doing. They weren't sure what they were doing. And I think that's what makes it really special because your film, in a sense, is mirrors the process of Lee making the album as he wasn't really sure what he wanted exactly. to do for that either. Yeah, it was a new experience for them, both of them. They'd never worked together before, mm -hmm. and Lee's really never worked in this manner where he just was sort of foraging and trying out song ideas without a band. Right. And, and I didn't know what to expect, so I was, it was all new and fresh to me. And um, yeah, and we just hung around for a long time. And it's not like anything Lee had done before either in Correct. terms of music. Right, right. And it's quite beautiful. I mean, we get a little bit of a taste of the album as uh, you work the way through the I think more than a little, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, Jerry, how did you get involved in this project? Well, we, so uh, Lee and Fred and I were all in, in school together at uh, SUNY Binghamton way back uh, when, 40 years ago. With, and with you. <laughs> yes, and I didn't even know that when we saw your film. It was such a kind of blast to hear that. Yeah, so it, it, it came from the past. And, uh, and actually, my wife and I met in painting class in the same, in this class that Lee was also a painter in. And mm. Lee is a multimedia artist. He yes, does a lot so. more than just uh, music. And so, uh, so my wife Karen, who's a painter, and I and Lee met in this class way back when. And then I had uh, Fred and I hadn't been in touch. Lee and I weren't real close friends. Uh, and I ran into Fred at actually at Occupy Wall Street uh, when that when that was going on. And we had a conversation there. And then when Lee uh, started shooting this film, he 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 and I were then in touch. And he said, "Oh, this you know this is happening." And I and I been an editor um, and, and producer for 30 years, but on short form. And so I hadn't worked on a, a feature a film, feature. And, I, and, it, and it just intrigued me what he was saying about what he was capturing there. And I just said, well, maybe I could do some editing for you. Let me play around with things. And it kind of evolved from that. Yeah, and it really flows very smoothly. You, you know, the film itself builds to the, the kind of dramatic moment at the end, at least for me. And at the same time, as I mentioned to Fred before, the film is quite a, at first I wanted to say it's like a painting. Hmm. And then I, I kind of backtracked as I was thinking about what to ask you guys that I thought it was more of a collage. As you have moments where what you see is in black and white, at other times in very striking color, and then you have the graphic imagery of the soundtrack that kind of pops right. up with all the sign curves. So I, I, was this something that you kind of came came together for you in the editing process? It did definitely come together in the editing process. I always imagined the film would be in black and white, mm. um, just completely. And, and, and part of that was really because when I looked at the footage originally that I shot the first weekend, mm. uh, the studio is just like a random you know, craziness of, of objects with different colors in them. And yeah. I just felt like I was looking all over the place. 
and I wanted to focus on what the, the work these two were doing. It was two guys, it was very intimate, and it was kind of like they were doing a job, like a very creative thing that still resembled like they showed up every day at 10 and they stayed till 11 at night. And I felt there was a black and white aesthetic there. And I also loved, you know, those black and white films from the 60s and 70s, yeah, very the Penny nice Baker. So. And, and so I felt there was no harm going that way. And, and as far as I was concerned, it made it easier to understand the movie. Then we started thinking about the structure of the film. We went back and shot interviews and we thought, well, let's get out of the studio. Let's completely blow up that feeling. And the color was an easy way to just take you someplace else. And it also gives a little background on his Sonic Youth past as well as yep. his his artistic past, and he works with his wife, too, in performance. Yeah, yeah, they perform a lot all over the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, folks, we're, we're running out of time, but what I wanted to mention to you is that uh, both of these guys are going to be at the opening night screening, which is a terrific program. We have two short films that will precede uh, the documentary, and that's on Friday, September 15th, our opening night. The program begins at 7 p.m. General admission is $12. Uh, for the general public and ten dollars for students and seniors. The two first films, one is called Hitchhiking with a 357 Magnum. It's an amazing film, it's very experimental. And the second film is called Greeting in the Afternoon by a, an artist from South Korea which is also very, very interesting and feeds very nicely into your film. So cool. these guys will be there to take questions and answers and hope you will join us for this great program. Again, you need further information, you go to njfilmfest.com or you feel free to call us at 848-932-8482. Thanks so much for coming, it was wonderful yeah, meeting you. Great, thank you. Thanks. Uh, so, I, you know, I like it, I like it. It's just I, like we're in foreign, foreign land for me with some of this stuff. Thank you.